My name is Amy and I live with my two dogs, Edge and Luna, in a 1979 Viscount caravan, currently still undergoing renovations. We've called this caravan home for three years, so a van tour is long overdue. So to begin this van tour, I think I will start with the kitchen. Now, I'll have to apologise in advance for any traffic sounds that you guys hear or a bloody lawnmower mowing the park across the road, because of course, I pull out this camera to film this van tour that I've been planning for so long, and there's a guy mowing the lawn across the road so i hope you guys can hear me okay and i do apologize in advance but if i don't film this video now i'm not going to get it done so we'll have to persist right so this is my kitchen so as you can see i've got like a little gas cooker that i use most of the time and i have a sink now this sink actually uh doesn't have running water yet that's something that's still left on my list of things to do with the reno uh, but at the moment I just fill up like a 10 litre water canister and then just tip water in and believe it or not only yesterday did I finish plumbing the sink so that the wastewater can run onto the garden at the back of the caravan. Now before you guys worry all the products that I actually use in the caravan are environmentally friendly so they're totally okay to water like an edible garden or any kind of garden with that wastewater. I have a pretty large sink and I am actually planning to have a custom made uh, like chopping board bench little thing that's going to fit over the sink here so that you know if I have dirty dishes like what I have at the moment hiding underneath here I can hide those under there until I'm ready to wash the dishes but it also creates extra bench space as well so I had this bench top custom made and I'm actually going to get the, the same guy he doesn't know about this yet but I'm going to get him to also make um, out of the same timber a matching piece that will go over the sink here so that's on my list of things to do as well as finishing the um, plumbing. Now I have this little basket here, this is kind of like a fruit bowl, at the moment I haven't got much in there, just an apple. Um, I found it's just handy to have a place to kind of store your fruit, um, stuff that you grab often. So I just got this, this is actually something that you hang plants in but I kind of liked it as a fruit bowl. I also just used this little gas cooker that I bought from Kmart for literally $20. And you also buy, they're pretty cheap, I can't recall off the top of my head, I think they're about like 12 Australian dollars for like maybe six of these canisters. So I just have these little canisters that I put in and they honestly last me so long. I do most of my cooking on here, I boil water, I cook, um, I use like a pan to toast toast and yeah I do most of my cooking on here but I also have a Weber outside that I use as an oven and I cook like roast vegetables in there and you know if I have like sausages or any kind of meat I'll usually roast it in the Weber outside and then if I ever run out of gas which has happened in the past because sometimes you're not that organized and you don't stock up and then you go to buy some and then the shops run out so if that ever happens I either use the Weber or I actually make a fire outside and do a bit of cooking on an open fire which I really enjoy however that is a lot more effort you have to collect firewood um, which there's for me I usually collect firewood by just collecting sticks around the property uh, whenever we have wind it blows a lot of the dead branches off the trees so I just collect those make a little pile and you know that kind of firewood is enough to really cook a basic meal so that's another option for cooking another thing with the kitchen here just a disclaimer with these gas cookers you're actually not allowed to use them inside or well, that's what the companies recommend I even had somebody who works for like a you know fire brigade say that they've actually had quite a few people in the past um, with fires in caravans because of these so don't maybe use one of these I'm doing the wrong thing by using it but I, when I do use it I'm pretty good like I have it right near the window here which is always open I make sure that this curtain is nowhere near the stove I make sure I don't have any candles on or anything else that's flammable sitting nearby and usually which you've just caught me doing the wrong thing but usually when I'm finished using it I put the lid back on this and put it away straight away so that it's not laying around and can maybe leak gas and cause a fire um, so yeah they're, they're the things that I do and if I'm ever worried about using it inside for whatever reason like if I feel like any gas has kind of leaked at all I'll just take it outside and put it on the deck and cook there um, 
but most of the time it's okay in here. Another thing that I have is all of this storage here in the kitchen. So everything that's here is stuff that I grab like on a daily basis. So I just keep, I'm pretty minimalistic. I actually don't have lots of plates and cups and like what you see is actually all that I have. In these cupboards, the only thing that's stored is like dry goods in the pantry section and also like, you know, a pot and a frying pan and like a cheese grater, things like that, which I'll get to shortly. So here I've got, I've started making my own bread, which is definitely work in progress. Um, cooking it in a Weber hasn't been successful so far, but I think I'll get there. So I've got all the ingredients up here that I use when I'm trying to cook this bread. Um, eggs, I have an egg on toast every morning for breakfast. Um, I'm actually waiting on receiving a blender from, I think it's called Blendjet, and they're actually USP, USP, USB charged blenders which will be perfect for me in the van here. And my plan is to actually start making my own nut milk. So I've got almond nuts here ready for when that arrives. Um, and I've also got like a little straining cotton bag in the cupboard under here, which I'll use also to make the milk. Um, my plates, one of them's dirty in the kitchen sink here. Chopping boards, salt and pepper, mugs. Yeah, so obviously you're probably thinking, hey, you live in a mobile home. If you move the place, you can't have all this stuff hanging around like everything's gonna fall off the benches I'm totally aware of that this caravan home is it's actually registered and I can move it it's got wheels and it's got a roadworthy certificate and everything but I actually live in it as more of like a permanent home like I'm in here all the time and I don't really travel much at the moment I do hope to in the future but for me to travel safely in this caravan there's a lot of things that I have to do to the braking system in my car and for the caravan and probably you know have a few upgrades done on the chassis even though it's okay to tow for me i've never towed in my life and i want to be really safe so if if i'm going to tow the caravan i'm going to have a bit of work done probably get like electric brakes or something especially considering this is my home not just like a recreational caravan and i've spent a lot of money um, building this home i'd be absolutely devastated if i was towing and anything at all happened to the caravan um, I do have insurance, but it's still not enough for what the caravan, what I've invested in the caravan. Because unfortunately, when you have an old vintage caravan, it's quite hard for them to value something like this. At the moment, this caravan, I think I've got it read, uh, I've got it insured for probably I think seventeen thousand, which I've spent probably like thirty thousand on it in total. And if I sold the van, I could potentially get thirty thousand or more for the van. Um, looking at you know what other people are selling their vans for and what mine has to offer so yeah I'm definitely not insured for as much as I'd like to be but it is what it is for now right so kitchen storage I have heaps of storage here underneath here this is where my bin is and also all my cleaning products and then underneath this cupboard here I've got like just random like dry pantry ingredients and also like storage for the gas stove when I don't want it out on the bench and like pots and pans and that sort of thing. So the van isn't at the moment really set up to be moved. I can actually pull it all apart and store things so that I can move the caravan short distances but if I was to decide to actually move the caravan long term and go traveling I would definitely have to like redesign how I've stored everything in these cupboards and make sure that they can't just open obviously. So everything up on that, those kitchen shelves would be stored in these cupboards and all of the plants that you see throughout the whole caravan would go into the shower tray. So now I'm gonna show you guys the lounge room. So this end of the van I actually call my lounge room. So I've got a two seater lounge here from Ikea, which is actually indoor outdoor furniture. I've got this little side table here, which is also matching to this two seater couch from Ikea. And I use this as like a side table a seat for my desk which is over the other side of where I'm sitting and also when I'm like eating food I don't actually have like a dining table or anything in here so there's plenty of places to sit or stand to eat so I usually sit here and just use that as like a table or I stand at the kitchen bench and eat or I actually go outside and sit on the deck and eat food. The other side across from me is actually a desk sort of shelved area where I put my computer and do some work sometimes. I store all my like electrical equipment including cameras and all, all that sort of stuff because I actually work as a photographer so I've got lots of like random little photography equipment under there. 
And then I've got some shelving which I can put little knickknacks on. I try to be quite minimalistic, so everything that you see in my home I actually do use and quite often. If something is sitting around that I don't use often, I actually tend to get rid of it. So because it's a small space, it probably might look to you a little bit cluttered, but everything in here holds a purpose. And if I haven't used something for more than 12 months, it doesn't have a place in my home anymore. So down this area, I actually want to kind of give you a little bit of history for this area here. So when I first moved into the caravan, um, and as I just kind of started to bring the whole renovation together, I actually designed a U-shaped lounge that kind of filled up this whole area here. And my plan for that was to store things underneath the seating area and also especially like batteries and inverters and those sorts of things. So I had that designed and lived with that for probably like maybe six months and after that time realized that it was really just a wasted space. There was so much seating and I didn't really need all of that seating space. I wasn't using the storage either because I'm quite a minimalist so I don't really have that much stuff to store everywhere. Um, so I decided to actually change that and I got a desk from Ikea. Uh, and th that desk actually sat, I'm pretty sure it was like where this lounge is here. It fit perfectly in this area. And because I work as a photographer, I'm on the computer all the time. So I wanted to have like a desk, which is where I sat to do all of that sort of work. And I just found I wasn't really sitting there and using it. And once again, it was taking up a lot of space in the caravan. And being a small home, you really want to make sure that every single aspect of the small space is being used. Uh, yeah, otherwise your home feels even smaller. So most of the time I actually sit on my bed and I have, once again from Ikea, a little tray that I got, I think it's like $20. And that tray is actually awesome. I use it all the time for not only eating in bed, which I know is probably gross, but sometimes I do that if I'm watching a movie in bed and have some dinner, I'll just sit there on the tray. But most of the time I use that tray to work on my computer, like making these videos. I actually really enjoy sitting in a bed, which I know is probably not the best thing for my spine, um, so I am mindful of that, but when I'm working on my computer, wow man, are you right? Um, when I'm working on my computer, I actually work on the bed, then I can move to this desk over here, then I can stand at this bench top here, or I could stand at the kitchen bench, so I can actually move around a lot in the van, which when I'm working for long hours on the computer, it's something I definitely tend to do because I find I need to move my body around and not sit in the same position for too long. So I got rid of the desk that was here once again and I think that's when I bought this lounge and I also had another seat just like this that was I was actually matching to this which was in the other corner. So I kind of turned this space into um, an area for people to sit when they visited but once again it was just so much seating and people don't really visit and when they do visit people don't really want to sit inside the caravan you tend to sit outside and have a fire and that sort of thing so I changed the design again um, and that's when I bought this little desk slash shelving unit from Ikea yeah I've shopped a lot at Ikea Ikea should probably sponsor me because so much in my caravan is from Ikea and so I bought that and to be honest I really love that because not only is it offering storage it looks nice I sit here with my little side table as my dining table and watch a movie as well um, it's also this seat is good because it's somewhere Edge likes to sleep sometimes most of the time they're in the bed with me but I'm trying as much as I love them and I love sleeping with them and cuddling them at night they do shed a lot of hair and I'm really sick of having dog hair in my bed um, but sometimes, you know, you just like, you can't say no to that beautiful face, so you end up letting them on the bed. I actually designed specifically for the dogs a doggy cave, which is underneath my bed. So I lifted the bed up so that Edge can actually be standing up and walking and just walk straight under the bed. Um, he doesn't have to curl up and crawl under the bed. It means that I can also like crawl under there if I need to, if I want to use it as a storage space, which I actually do for my batteries, my inverter, and my 12 volt, 12 volt fridge that I have at the moment, which I will soon be upgrading. Um, so yeah, this space, which I call the lounge room, I've changed so many times, but I think that the way it is at the moment, I'm really happy with it. And I think it's definitely gonna stay like this for some time. Um, and the best part is I have this furniture that's 
removable it's not like built into the van so if I wanted to change the design or I wanted someone to come and stay over and we needed somewhere else for them to sleep you could put like a blow up mattress on the floor here and put this outside because it's actually weatherproof because it's an outdoor piece of furniture and I also when I have people over which quite often I have like little campfires outside and I invite a bunch of friends over I tend to have like the deck that I've built outside as like seating for people I take this outside for seating this can act as a seat and then I also have a couple of like really nice rugs that I throw down on the ground so you can actually fit quite a few people around a campfire outside and I think that's like quite one of the highlights of living in this caravan is entertaining. I love being a host and inviting people over and you know having a campfire and showing them this different style of living as well. Um, so yeah I, that, this furniture works really well for me and once again you're probably wondering if I decide to move the caravan, how am I going to deal with this furniture that can just slide all over the place? Well, when I decide to move the caravan, I will work on that. But I imagine I'll just get some kind of like bracing clips that I'll put behind the chair, which can attach to the wall, and then it can't really move around. They're really light pieces of furniture as well, like super light. So it's not like it's a really big, heavy, bulky item. Um, taking up room in the caravan and adding to the weight of the caravan and also able to like move around a lot it's yeah it's pretty pretty good so I've got these I think they're called pontoon lights or something um, I actually just have those draped through the caravan and then when I also host outside and invite people over for like a little get-together around the fire outside I actually drape it's connected in a way where I can drape it out the window and hook it into the tree so that we've got lighting outdoors as well. Um, those just plug straight into my inverter and work perfectly fine. So at night time that's the lighting I use. If I have consecutive rainy days I actually use candlelight um, to reduce the amount of electricity that I'm drawing from my battery. I do have um, like proper lights in the caravan as well. I've got one in the lounge room, bathroom, kitchen and bedroom and I've got power points all through the caravan so I had that all put in uh, when I was renovating the caravan and so I can connect the caravan to mains power but I actually decided not to sort of use that as my main source of power because I like being off grid um, and also where I'm parked on the property that I'm at at the moment I'm quite far away from the power point to plug into so I'd have to run 75 meters of cable to the closest power point and then I'd also have an electricity bill which I'm not keen on so I definitely prefer being off grid and being off grid's never really been an issue except for when we have like lots of rainy weather and I'm drawing too much power it took me a little while to learn you know what like what, when I'm draining too much power, what I can use, what I can't use. And when that happens, I kind of just take that as an excuse to go and stay with family anyway. So I'll go and visit my mum and stay with her in Idle too, so that my battery can build back up. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not ideal, but it doesn't happen very often. Not as much as it did when I first moved in and I was, you know, unaware of how much power the system could actually supply me with so this is my bedroom and this is like the little tray that i was telling you guys about before and how i work on my computer in bed so i usually get really comfy i've also got a hair in my eye <laughs> still there okay that was one of those dog hairs that i was telling you about and i think there's another one so this is the computer tray that I was telling you guys about that I got from Ikea and this is where I do most of my work so I usually get nice and comfy in bed, make breakfast or a coffee, put it on the bench here. My iPad goes up on the stand and that's where I watch YouTube videos just like you are and also Netflix or yeah pretty much just Netflix and YouTube that's all that I watch on the iPad. So I bought, uh, I think it's a 12 inch iPad and that's what I use as a TV in the caravan. It's awesome, I can charge it um, by USB on my inverter easily. Um, yeah, it's perfect. And I also have like, I don't know where it is at the moment, but I've got like a little stand that I also put here if I want the screen to be closer to me and um, I just put the iPad and rest it there and, and watch that in bed. And then I can also move that to the lounge room and watch that like while I'm sitting eating dinner, while it's sitting on the desk area. So yeah, this bed is a double bed. It's perfect for me, but if 
someone bought this caravan and they were really tall, it probably wouldn't be long enough. Uh, so that's something that someone would have to deal with if they bought the caravan, but for me it's totally fine. So this is my wardrobe. I just hang all my clothes there and then I've got a little storage bin underneath there. That down there, that section is actually where the fridge is going to go. Um, yeah, once I get the new fridge, I'll share all of that on my channel as well. So when that happens, um, I'm either going to keep this curtain just because it's really light and being in a van you want things to be lightweight, or I'm going to maybe upgrade and get like in the same timber as the bench two nice little wooden doors that open. I think that would look really nice, but as I said, it'll add extra weight and it's also something else to, to spend money on. Um, so yeah, there'll be the wardrobe up there and then down the bottom there is where the fridge will be. Okay, so this is the bathroom, which is still a work in progress. I have a nature's head composting toilet. I have heaps of storage there, which actually goes over the wheel well of the caravan. That's where the dog's water sits because sometimes they spill the water and um, all of this area has been waterproof so it's kind of okay if it spills in there. Not really, but you know, it's better spilt in there than out somewhere else. Um, and then I've got the shower in there. Now the bathroom actually isn't quite finished yet, so there's still heaps to do, like finish all of this, like put the light in, um, finish putting trim in and painting the walls and that sort of thing. Um, so I've got this little toilet roll. I actually positioned that high, which probably seems like it would feel awkward, but I did that because when you're sitting on the toilet, it's above your shoulder and it's not kind of going to bump into you. Um, I used this window as ventilation for the bathroom. I'm planning down the track, as you'll see, it's really dark in the shower. So I'm still yet to finish putting that roof on and you know finish the shower entirely at the moment it's just like a storage place where i put random stuff like my dirty clothing that i need to wash um i'm actually planning on hopefully putting a skylight in there because it is so dark in the caravan um i've actually got the iso on my camera at 6000 so yeah it's a pretty dark small space I think it'd be okay for me, but you know, if I was to ever sell the van, this would probably be something that people would, wouldn't really like. When you walk in the caravan, this is what you see. So I've got some plants hanging there at the moment, which just bring a little bit of life into the caravan, but I'm not too happy with the design. I've mainly got them there to hide that ugly electrical box, which is on the other side, on the outside of the caravan, where you can plug into mains power. So I'm actually planning on building some kind of shelf slash cabinet there which will hide that um, and then I can also put the plants on neatly so that's pretty much what you see there my little side table my bench that runs along here that's my camera bag that I use for work then you've got the kitchen and the bedrooms down the back and then that's where the bathroom is so when you walk in there's like this big room there, which seems like an overkill, but it actually kind of needs to be this big. So you've got space to sit on the toilet comfortably, and then enough comfortable space in the shower there as well. So that's how I've done the layout. And then down the back, we've got the bedroom, lots of plants, a mirror to bring some more light in. curtains. I have my desk which is what I was telling you guys about before. So I've got a couple of shelves there for storage which as I said like to stay, I like to keep these minimalistic. Um, and then I've got my iPad which is where I watch TV. So sitting here like this, this is where I eat my food and then watch something on the TV. Now it is a small screen, so that's not gonna suit everyone, especially if you don't have the best eyesight. So you can like move it around, which is what I do sometimes. So sitting on my lounge here, while I'm enjoying breakfast and a cup of tea or coffee, whatever, I've got my desk that is on the wall there, a little hanging rack, which is where I hang random stuff, and then a nice little view to the deck and the fire outside and the yard, so I can watch the doggies run around. Underneath the bed, I've got my inverter and a battery that I've put. I know it's so dark, I apologise. 
Um, but yeah, just a 120 amp hour battery under there in the crate, which connects to this um, inverter, which has two 240 volt plugs and also some USB plugs there. So that powers everything. And it also connects that little connector there that you can't see very well is what is connected to the fridge. Um, so yeah, this will all change once I, once I get my new fridge as well. But that's how I'm powering things at the moment. So having a Dutch door like this is awesome for extra light and more air ventilation and also to keep the dogs inside when I need them to stay inside. The only downside to having a wooden door is when it rains it does swell and then being able to shut the door like that and also fit it into the door frame becomes a bit of a hassle. So to be honest I probably wouldn't recommend having a wooden door although it does look really when it comes to privacy and security in the van, I was lucky enough to actually get crimp-safe screens put onto the van. Usually you can't get crimp-safe screens, I've been told, on any kind of window that is circular. So the fact that my van actually has square-shaped windows meant that I could get crimp-safe screens, which is awesome because I can keep the windows open all year round, pretty much, letting lots of airflow into the caravan and also lots of light. And the caravan actually acts as like a dog kennel when I'm not home. So I can leave the dogs inside the caravan on cool days because all the windows are open and there's ample ventilation for them. And they also can't claw out because it's crimp safe screens. So when it comes to privacy in the caravan, I did two things. Firstly, I had all of my windows tinted. The windows on the caravan are really big and are everywhere, which is great. I love having all the windows in the caravan, but it does actually mean that people can see in to the whole caravan and when people would walk past or drive past I noticed that people tended to really people did actually look in the caravan quite a lot and I suppose they're just interested to see that someone's living in a caravan like that and wanted to see what it looked like inside or what I was up to I don't know but people stare um, so I got the windows tinted for privacy and I also got curtains for nighttime. Window tint obviously doesn't work at night. So I actually had um, some curtains made so at nighttime I can draw all the curtains shut and have privacy at night. So you guys also might be wondering what the hell is going on with the exterior of the caravan. So I pretty much, I'd say 90% completed the interior renovation, but I actually haven't finished the exterior. So at the moment we've started sanding the outside of the caravan. Doing this, I actually have injured my elbow and I actually wouldn't recommend sanding the exterior of a caravan this big. It's a complete nightmare to do. So I've employed a business that's actually coming on Wednesday and they're going to be, I think it's called vapor blasting. They're gonna do the whole van. Then I'm gonna go around and reseal all of the trim, which I've already started to do on this side of the van. Um, so once it's been vapor blasted, I'm gonna go back over the whole van, reseal all of this, also replace uh, missing rivets because there's a couple of holes here and there that are missing and then we'll be painting the van again with the correct paint white again but it will be all fresh and brand new and it'll be easier to maintain because there's been all different types of paints used on the van in the past from the previous owners and one of them was house paint and it started to peel because you're not actually I've been told supposed to use house paint on an aluminium van um, especially if it's in direct daylight all the time. So anyway, so I'll be repainting this van shortly in a couple of videos to come. As I showed you guys earlier, my shower inside the caravan isn't actually complete yet. So at the moment I'm using an outdoor shower on the private land I'm renting from an elderly lady. If you guys would like to learn more about my lifestyle, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and feel free to binge watch all of our previous episodes. That's all for now and we'll see you in our next episode. I'm standing here going, I can smell extreme shit. And I just stood in the biggest dog shit. Oh my god. Who did that? Oh no. Oh no. And I'm like walking it all over the caravan.